All right then, my friends. So currently we can sign in anonymously inside this sign in widget and then we receive the result back, which is a user object, a custom user object, and we can print out the UID of that user. Now, what we really want to be able to do at this point is listen for that authentication change when we get that user and then show the home screen when that happens, when a user signs in, instead of just printing this to the console. So then in the future, if they then sign out, we can also listen for that authentication change and then we can show them the signing screen again. So we're protecting our home screen from unauthenticated users. Now, remember, inside our wrapper widget right here we can either show the home screen widget or the authenticate one right here we're currently showing the authenticate one but we want this to be dynamic so when we're listening to those authentication changes this is going to be the place where we dynamically change what a user sees will it be the authenticate widget or will it be the home widget so this will change dependent on that result so First of all, we need to be able to actually listen to those authentication changes. And to do that, we'll be using a stream. So then what is a stream? A stream is pretty much what it says it is. It's a stream. So you can think of it as like a real life stream that travels from one place A to another point B. And on that stream, you could place something at the source, which would ultimately then travel to the destination along the stream. So imagine that you wanted to, say, transport 50 rubber ducks from the source to the destination, but you also had to pack each duck inside a box first of all. So what you could do is you could box up all of the ducks first and stockpile them and then send them all in one go when they're all boxed up together. But that would mean waiting a significant amount of time over here before you get anything at all because you have to wait for them all to be boxed up. Now, the good thing about streams is that we wouldn't have to wait for everything to be boxed up, first of all. Each duck could be sent along the stream as it was boxed up, meaning that at the source we'd have a constant income of boxed ducks as they're being made. Now, a similar thing is going to happen if we set up a stream between our Flutter app and the Firebase Auth service. The Firebase Auth service is going to emit something to us every time a user either signs in or signs out. And that something could either be a null value if they signed out or some kind of user object if they signed in. So our Flutter app is going to be able to receive those event objects when they happen and determine based on the value inside of them, whether they're a user object or null, whether a user is logged in or logged out. And at that moment, we want to update our UI appropriately. Now, the Firebase Auth service has a stream built into it that we can listen to by invoking a function called onAuthChanged. So we're going to take a look at that now and set it up inside our Auth service class. OK, then, so we want to set up this stream, which is going to detect authentication changes. And we want to do that inside our auth service class right here. Now, I'm going to do it above this sign in and non function. And I'm going to create a little comment to say what this is. And it's just auth change user stream. So let's set up this stream. First of all, it's of type stream. And the data that we're going to be getting back from this stream is going to be a Firebase user that's what it's a stream of okay because when a user signs in they're going to send us a firebase user back now it's a getter so we'll use the get keyword and we'll call this user but you can call it what you will okay so now what we want to do is return a stream inside here so we're going to return and it's built into the firebase auth library so we're going to use this firebase auth instance first of all to grab that so underscore auth and then it's dot on auth and it's this one right here, state changed. We're returning this stream on this auth object. And this stream is going to return to us Firebase users whenever there's a change in authentication. Now, that's absolutely fine. But remember before, we said we don't want to work with Firebase users. We want to work with our own custom user defined by this user model. So what I'd like to do, instead of getting a stream of Firebase users every time a user signs in, then I want to get a stream of normal users, right? So we can easily map this stream into a stream of users based on our user class by using the map method. So let me come under here so there's more room for me and close off this file tree. Then I'll say dot. So we're using this, by the way, on this on auth state change thing. 
we're going to say dot and then map to map this to a stream of users based on our user class. So inside this map method, we can pass a function and we're going to pass in the Firebase user and user that we get back to that function. And inside the function, all we're going to do is return user from and it's Firebase user and we pass in that user. So now every time we get back a Firebase user inside the stream, we're going to map that to a normal user based on our user class. Now, right now, we're getting a red line here because it's saying the return type is different. We're not now returning a Firebase user in the stream. We're returning a normal user based on our user class. So we can just delete this thing right here and type user, oops, user like that instead. And now that red line goes away. So this is absolutely fine. Now what we're doing here is setting up a stream so that every time a user signs in or signs out, we're gonna get some kind of response down this stream, some kind of event to tell us, look, this is the current user that's signed in or maybe null if the user signed out. And then what we're doing is we're mapping that into our user so that in our app, when we listen to this stream, that user object is what we get back, okay? So we can grab that user object then and do something with it. Now, there is a simpler way to do this map method right here. We don't have to explicitly write out all of this function declaration. What we can do is just say instead dot map, and by the way, I'm gonna comment this line out like so, and we'll say dot map, and all we need to do is pass in this function right here so grab that and paste it in right here. And that is exactly the same. This right here is exactly the same as this. This functionality is implied. So it passes the user that we get back down the stream into this function right here. And it does the same thing. So let me delete that middle line. And now we have our stream set up. So now when we use this, we'll be setting up a stream listening for auth changes. Whenever an auth change occurs, we get back a value in this stream. That value is either going to be a user object based on our user class, if the auth change was the user signing in, or it will be a null value if the user signs out. And by the way, you don't have to use a custom user class if you prefer to use the generic Firebase user object. I just like to abstract away from the Firebase user to create a user object more suited to what I need in my app. But anyway, now that we've set this up in the auth service, we need a way to access it in our root widget so that it can know whether a user is logged in or not. And we're going to see how to do that in the next lesson.